Hello gentle friends, welcome back. The plan for today is to do a mock-up of Tudor's trunk hose. Everyone needs to do a mock-up, I'm no exception, especially as this is a new pattern to me. This is not a tutorial or a how-to style video, this is more of a blog style thing and doesn't include a lot of instructions. I will be going over the instructions in detail when I do the videos for the actual proper trunk hose which will be coming out in the next month, two months. It's going to be more than one video because having made these now, I can tell you it takes a while. But yes, I think that's all I need to say, let's get on with the sewing! The first job is obviously to figure out my pattern, which comes from the Tudor Taylor. It's the trunk hose pattern from there. You can buy it separately, but I've just brought the book. So what I've done is digitalize the page, opened that in an image processor to actual size, and then just adjusted the size, enlarged it until the grid pattern matched what it should be, which is each square being one inch. So once I had everything to the actual size, as in each square being an inch. I saved it as a PDF and printed it as a poster, which gives my lovely, I think it was something like 53 sheets or something like that, quite a few, which gives me a lovely jigsaw to make. So next job, assembling this jigsaw. So that's everything stuck together. Obviously you can see that at one point things ended up as straight as I am, i.e. not particularly. I took it all out on the pocket because that straight lines, I can adjust that really easily. So that is my next job. There's a couple of markations that I want to move on to the actual pattern as well. So I'm gonna take my cheat sheet with me. I want this marked and then I need to straighten this out for which a tape measure or a ruler would be useful. Let's go for the ruler option. So so this is meant to be five inches so it's almost there actually from here. And the same here. So what I'm doing is just measuring five inches from the fold. I assume that's a fold anyway. To give me that. And I'm going to use this line which I know is roughly straight. Oh, that's going to be a pain. Let's see, that should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen inches. Okay, so it's 
so that's good. Let's just okay. And this is me discovering that things are slightly off, but not enough to be too much of an issue. That's that corner marked back in. And then I just need to add this as well. So that's my pockets fixed. So then I just want to add this to here too. And then I can start cutting things out and taping the back of them. I'm not going to cut out the actual individual pieces for the actual trunk hose yet because I'm not going to start sewing immediately and I don't want them to go walkies. It has been a hot second since I've checked back with Aziraphale. First Christmas sewing happened, and then Christmas happened, and then exams happened, but finally we're back in business. So I've got all my pattern pieces that I cut out a while ago. I do have a small problem with them, as I will show you. So these squares are meant to be one inch by one inch, and there comes the shadow. They are not. It's only a little bit off, which is why, but you know, it builds up fairly quickly. Like what should be six inches is five and a half. So that's the problem that I'm going to have to now deal with. Obviously I could reprint the pattern, but I don't want to because I thought I had this exact on the computer and I'm not sure what I did wrong and I can't be asked to keep adjusting it and then print, keep printing it because that's a waste of paper and ink when I can adjust it from the pattern really. So yeah, the pattern pieces are a tiny bit too small. Height-wise this isn't a problem, the pattern is made for a man who's five foot seven and I'm not that tall. So the height-wise I'm not that concerned about. Length-wise however, I am not the size that the pattern should be because I'm soft, because we're going for positivity, so I'm soft. So I would have needed to extend the pattern lengthways either way. Now I'm going to have to extend it even more. I did work it out before Christmas and I can't remember how much, but it's something ridiculous like 10 centimeters on the top or something. However, the plan is, so we've got these two pieces. These are the only pieces that are fitted in the pattern. So what I want to do is resize those two, then do the other pieces as they are, and see if they're in proportion, because honestly that's the more important thing than exact measurements or anything like that. As long as they're in proportion, that's all that matters. They will be obviously in proportion up and down, but sideways is the bigger problem. And the main reason for that is because I do not want to try and extend this pattern. I mean, uh, and obviously the other part of the trousers, like trying to extend these panels would also be a pain in the ass. So I'm just going to extend these two, which are the normal trouser bit, or the bit that looks like a normal trouser bit. And then from there, I will do a mock-up base, once I've got those fitted and right. Oh, the other thing is, <sighs> I'm kind of worried about this because I managed to find two people who've done this pattern before. And one of them mentioned that the trousers were really heavy, which makes a lot of sense. And he had difficulty keeping them up. Now, I have a problem keeping trousers up anyway. And there is no way of adjusting, there's no flies or anything on these trousers. Obviously no elastic or anything like that. So I'm slightly worried about that, which means I need to try and get them fitting as closely as possible. 
However, my shape goes up and down relatively often, so I'm not sure how well that's going to work out. So for now, what I'm focusing on is extending this pattern, getting these fitting as best as I can, and then we're going to do a mock-up of all the other pieces and see if they're in proportion. If they're not in proportion, then I'll have to come back and adjust those pattern pieces as well. Fingers crossed that will work out fine, though. Well, the good news is the pattern is definitely big enough. But the bad news, I think I might have overestimated somewhere. That's <laughs> gonna take a little bit of adjusting. <laughs> I'm now thinking maybe I should have just done it on the original pattern looking at this, but um, I guess that isn't 20 centimeters, so. Let's just say I added twice as much as I needed to. <sighs> yeah, time to slim this down. Well, uh, not falling off anymore, I do feel like I'm gonna take part in some weird ass uh, sport activity in these. And I feel like I should probably make them a bit tighter around the thigh, but I guess that's gonna get covered up by stuff. <laughs> Honestly, I suspect, I kind of suspect these are actually back to the original size. If that's the case, I think rather than cutting them off, I'll just recut them from the from the pieces that I've got here. That sounds like a plan. Okay, that's the next plan. Okay, ladies and gents, let me introduce you to a version four. As you can see, my legs are looking lovely today. And I feel like I'm still entering some weird sort of sports contest in these lovely shorts, but they fit. Version three, which was the exact size of the pattern, did not fit. So I feel quite justified in all of this bath now. If I'd done that and they'd fit perfectly, I would have been quite pissed. I couldn't even get them on, which is why I didn't show them. Having looked at the pattern again, I've seen there is closing, so I don't feel as bad as I did. I should probably also explain the elephant in the room, which is that I stopped paying attention to front and back, so I ended up with two legs of the same size, which is why one has got a lovely flappy bit and the other doesn't, because, yeah, I, I, I did that, didn't I? So, yes, that 
is the foundation and the canyons done because the canyons will be sewn on um, it's the dotted line actually so it's crotch level so they'll be sewn on here and then yeah just on to stage two which is doing all the extra bits and if these fitted just with the extra I mean that's what three centimeters those should fit perfectly fine too so I'm hopeful that this one singular mock-up should be all that I need here's hoping hello friends so my wife is away for the weekend which gives me two days to try and get a working mock-up of these trunk hose done so it's already midday because I've had some cleaning and other stuff to do. So anyway, task for today is to get the working mock-up done. We've already got the foundation layer, which is the bit that I needed fitting. Everything else should fit. It's, but I, A, I want to check before I get into the expensive fabrics because these bits are the expensive fabrics. And B, I want to have a go at making this thing before I go with the expensive fabrics so that if I f bugger up, I bugger up on this lovely £1.50 polyester nightmare that I brought because it was €1.50. So we also have these panels that I haven't cut out yet, and the most important part of any costume, the pocket. Yes. So um, first job is obviously to do what I've been putting off and cut out these panels and repair the tear then cut everything out and then we'll get to sewing and see what happens. That took a lot longer than necessary, but here we are. Everything is cut out. 
I've got all of these pinned and ready to go except for the last two because I've run out of pins. And part of that is because I got overexcited and started to pin the darts on these and then went back to the pattern and went, oh, oh yeah, okay, I, I guess I should do the side seam first. So I've got those to sew, side seams first and then come back to do the darts. Except I think the pocket goes in first, but I'll double check the pattern before I get there. I've got those to sew because I got overexcited and put seam allowance on the side. Although actually that's not a bad thing because it'll stop them from shredding. Um, obviously I'll need that on the actual thing to put the lining to the front. But because I'm not lining this, then yeah. And then here we have these, which I took apart. This is the original what you just saw me do in this, but it was like a week ago for me. This is the foundation which I took apart so I could have them actually with the seams on the inside on both, so the seams are in the same place. So, everything's cut out, everything is ready to do for the first lot of stitching. I'll probably only do an hour or so more tonight because it's coming up to half seven already and I haven't eaten dinner or anything yet and yeah. So, lots of sewing, freeing up some pins, and then seeing where we get up to. Let's go! By the way, if you were wondering why I ran out of pins, this is how many it took just to hem the panels. And it also took me forever to do them. But they're done now. All 18 of them. So now I can get onto some actual construction. Yay. Oh, the light's so bad today. Anyway, welcome back to day two of the weekend sewing marathon. I've only got a couple of hours today because there's Pokemon Go event at two and wife will be home after that. But that's okay, we can still get some stuff done. I went back to the pattern last night and realised that I also need to close off the tops of these. So that's my first job for today after doing the rest of these tucks. I say the rest of them, but you need to do every, um, leave every third one undone so you can get these to fit exactly to the line that I didn't put on the foundation garment, so that's another thing that I need to do. But yeah, I've got a lot of stuff pinned ready to go. Hopefully I can get it put together before the wife gets home. I'm not that hopeful about it, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Let's see where we get to. seams because I'm a lazy sod but I think it's gonna be easier to see the darts if they're pressed so pressing we're doing and I figured while I would do it I would have a quick chat to you guys about stuff that I do while doing mock-ups. So when I'm doing mock-ups one of the things that I like to do is use up old bobbins and old bits of thread so that when I start the new project I have an empty larder essentially. 
I am very picky about my Fred. I am one of those people who will only buy a brand name Fred. Fred is so cheap and the difference between bad Fred and good Fred makes a massive difference because it just snaps and you spend more time dealing with it than you do anything else. So I just go for the brand name, spend the one pound extra which is nothing compared to the rest of the project and then just don't spend the rest of my life faffing around with it. Anyway, so the upshot of that is that I like to use up odd bits of thread. Obviously on this project I'm not going to need bobbins, but it means next time I want to sew something I've got a clear lot of bobbins for me to start with the new one. I used to hoard threads a lot more and hoard the bobbins a lot more. We don't need any more thread, we need to go through some thread. And I don't want to have, you know, a thread with 10 metres or whatever on it. Well, I guess 10 metres isn't too bad, but you know, one of the ones where it's just got the edge, the um, ends of the thread left. I don't want those sitting around, so I use those up as well if I run out of bobbins, which I'm going to shortly. The other thing I like to do when I'm doing mock-ups is to use a larger stitch size than I would normally use on day-to-day -day sewing. So obviously every machine is slightly different, but on my machine I normally use stitch size 2 for general sewing. When I'm basting I use stitch length 4, which is the largest one, and when I'm doing mock-ups I use a 3. And the reason for that is that I will inevitably end up unpicking things and I just want to make life a little bit easier for myself. I'll also not tie off ends or backstitch over ends like I would do normally, although I have done in places like this is the pocket I have done there because otherwise it's just going to tear open the second I start to try and figure out if it fits or not. And on these darts as well, the same thing, I've backstitched the ends of those so they don't go everywhere. And then, obviously, I've gone ahead and marked these mock-ups with Sharpie. It's actually something I've never done before. I was working with chalk as normal, and then I started to lose my markings, and I was like, well, why am I doing this to myself when I've brought... Thanks, Mr. Ambulance. When I've brought this fabric specifically to make this mock-up. Obviously I am going to reuse it afterwards because I don't just chuck fabric in the bin, that's not how I roll. But I'm never going to wear what I'm making now out, the fabric isn't going to be wearable, the fabric was never wearable, it's just cheap and nasty. So I might as well might as well make life easier for myself. It means I can, when I've got these to the point where they can fit, I can take them apart and use them as pattern pieces. And I don't think I've actually said beforehand that I am using machine for this stage, even though I said I was going to be using historical techniques the whole way through. This is a mock-up. I would like to have it done this side of the next decade. I think doing this mock-up has taken about 10 hours to the stage where it is now, so. I am looking forward to hand sewing it, but I don't want to hand sew it three or four times. I want to just hand sew it once. And the last thing I was going to say is that, so when I first picked up the book and looked at the pattern, I was staring at it as if it was written in Latin or something. It just made no sense to me. But luckily, as I got going on it, it's slowly starting to come into focus and I'm starting to figure out what they're getting at. And yeah, it's just starting to make sense, which is really good. I mean, that's one of the reasons for making a mock-up. Like, obviously, <laughs> the big one is to make sure that things fit before you use your expensive fabric. But honestly, when you've got a new pattern as well, especially one like this one, which is, I would definitely call advanced. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like, it's not the most tailored garment in the world. Oh, uh, apparently I didn't backstitch there. I guess there's a lot of pieces that aren't standard, and that's part of what made it so complicated. It's getting to grips with, you know, canyons and foundation layers. The techniques themselves aren't necessarily advanced. I think it's just a lot to do with a lot of... with pieces of material that you're not necessarily used to using. 
I think that's what makes it so complicated. Once you have the pieces in your hand, and you start to work with them, it all starts to, like I said, come into focus, and you start to figure out what's going where, and how things are going, and how it makes the garment, which is really nice. It's really nice to see things just start to work out in your head. So yeah, that's my mini talk on mock-ups. And now that this is almost done, I'm going to get back to working on it. I have marked the line that this needs to match up with. So once this is ironed, I can pin that against there and see how much more I need to take up in the remaining darts. And I will show this process properly when I do the actual video as opposed to this one, which is just me staring at things and sorting out how it works for myself. So this is where I managed to get up to on the weekend. I've got one side, well, attached. The um, panels, panes aren't attached at the top because they go onto the waistband rather than the trousers. And there should be wadding in there, but I'm not going to do that for this, so they're not puffing out quite how they should do, but it's so heavy and this is just with this fabric is going to be so heavy for the real thing anyway so now I just need to do that once again so gathering on the top here to attach that and then attach the bottom of the panes to it and then attach that to the trousers and then I can put the, the foundations and then I can sew the foundation layers together so hopefully I can at least get to that stage before the wife comes home in a couple of hours Let's see how this goes. how ridiculous these are. They're so puffy and they're not even as puffy as they're going to be because of how thin this material is and it's not got any wadding in like these are gonna be like wearing cushions on my legs. So yeah that was my mock-up done. I there's a lot of things I need to improve on the actual thing so quite aside from making sure that it actually fits just learning how to make the damn things it was worth it for that alone. So, I mean, that's the other reason to make mock-ups, isn't it? Um, so for example here, somehow, and I don't know how, I've managed to get this one the right way round and this one the wrong way round. So this, the, this should be swapped with the one on the back. But in general, it fits pretty well. I can't remember if I said or not. There is actually a method to tie it down. You put a couple of holes in here, and then on the jacket, there's also a couple of holes. So you basically sew yourself in, or tie yourself in anyway, which kind of explains, thinking about it, why trousers were a men's garment and skirts were a women's jacket, because if you had to untie that every time you wanted to go to the loo, yeah, no. Anyway, that's by the by. So I'm pretty happy with this mock-up as it stands. There's a couple of things I know I need to keep an eye out for as I'm going, but the most important thing is that I can now order material, which means I can get started on things. I think actually how these ended up, there's even enough space underneath to put my hose, which is what I was worried about. I can't believe how big this 
Oh yeah, also, most important thing, pockets. There is one on the other side as well, but that's still tacked down, so I can't actually get my hand into it. All in all, fairly success. I mean, obviously it took me four goes to get the foundations right, but once the foundations are right, it wasn't too bad. One thing I will show you guys, but let me talk about it first. One thing I did discover was that, so I didn't adjust the piece, the sizes of any of the pieces except for the foundation and the waistband. In retrospect, what I could have done and what I'm probably going to do on the main thing is if I'd wanted to adjust the sizing of the lining, which is this piece here that goes underneath with all the darts in, the best thing to do is just to completely ignore the darts and then when you do the real thing, put those on yourself. And when I do the real thing, what I'm going to end up doing is redoing those darts, essentially, because I'm not happy with how the darts look on this because they're all uneven, even though it's very hidden. I just rather make sure that they're all even. So if you did need to adjust the size on the linings, which are these pieces here that go underneath the panes, what I would do, and what I'm going to do for the real thing, is just completely ignore all the darts on the bottom. So all of these bits here, just ignore them, resize it as you would do any normal piece, and then do the do the darts from scratch once you have it patterned out on your fabric. Because honestly, by the time you've enlarged it anyway, they kind of feel like they're slightly inaccurate. So I think it's just easier just to put them out yourself on the fabric and do it that way. But I'll show you that when I do the actual trunk hose, because on the actual trunk hose, that's what I'll be doing. So yeah, I am very pleased with my adventures and I'm looking forward to doing the real ones and also not looking forward to doing certain bits of the real ones where there's going to be like 10 layers of stupidly thick fabric because this is the thing that you wear in the summer, right? Oh, how I love the mini ice age. Thanks, Tudor Britain. So that's my mock-up done. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you found the process of the mock-up slightly interesting. If not, I'm sorry that you stuck around so long. But as I promised earlier, I will be doing a full how-to tutorial style video with the full detail of what I did once I have the actual proper trunk hose done, and that will be coming out some point in the near future. Thank you to everyone who subscribed, thank you for everyone who stuck around, I hope you enjoyed it enough to leave me a like, and if you are not subscribed already, please do. My question for you guys today is, what is your current project, and how many mock-ups did it take you to get to the point where you were ready to go with a fashion fabric? Or, if you haven't started on it yet, how many are you hoping that you'll get away with having to do? And I realise the answer is always one, but, you know, sometimes you know it's going to take more than one, so let me know what you're up to, and stick around for the next video coming out in two weeks. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Mm -hmm.